All right, hello everybody. Um, as you can see, it's been a while since I posted a video. Um, I've been really busy in my life and I wanted to give everybody an update. Um, so between schoolwork, uh, I'm trying to get my degree right now, um, and work and family and all that, it, it's been hectic, but I'm going to get back into recording these videos. My channel is going to be evolving a little bit. Um, I want to start reviewing all sorts of geekery, not just games, wrestling, whatever. Uh, we're still going to be called the Will Dogs Games and Wrestling because those are my two main passions. And I'd like to share those with you, but I'm going to start reviewing a little bit more. And this video is going to be a bit of a hodgepodge. I want to go over everything that I've been doing over the last couple of months. Just stuff that I enjoy that I think you might enjoy. Um, so, first of all, I've been, you know, Star Wars came out December, what, 17th of this past year. So, we're about two months since. Uh, first, I'll, I'll just give my initial thoughts on the, the movie. Now, I didn't grow up with the original trilogy in theaters um, as they were originally meant to be shown. Um, I, I grew up, I watched them on VHS. We, we had the VHSs before the special editions, which is awesome, by the way. Um, and... The special editions came out in 97. I never, I never went and saw them. Um, I don't like CGI. Um, one of the big reasons I love the Star Wars films was because they had to do everything by hand. And they did all this amazing stuff without a lot of CGI. I mean, you, you look at Return of the Jedi, you look at the Rancor monster, how different would he have looked had it had been CGI, it would have looked lazier. You know, yes, it, it looks like crap now, but back then it was awesome. Even even back in the 90s when I first watched it, it looked pretty good. Uh, so, I didn't grow up with those uh, in theaters. I grew up watching the prequels in theaters. I remember May 1999, I went opening day with my family. My dad was excited, my mom was excited, I was excited. And we got what we got. Um, I'm. I will stand by that. Episode one was a good movie, uh, minus the the blatant attempts to bring in the kid crowd with Jar Jar Binks. Um, I'd go on about him for about three hours here, but I'm not going to. Um, the film had a great villain, and that is one of the big things. And that's what we're going to talk about here. I've been reading a lot of the new canon. Um, as many of you know, Disney bought Lucas Arts or Lucas Films. Sorry, uh, basically all Star Wars. Um, and early in 2013, they said, "All right, every book that's been written before this is no longer canon. Uh, the movies are Clone Wars TV series, uh, the CGI one, not the the traditional animation one. Um, that movie for that for that TV series." And any comics, any media that comes out after this date, that's canon. But everything else is legend. It's, that's the, the legends um, portion of the canon. But it's not really canon. So I was like, okay. I want to go through some of this canon that I, I, I just, I've missed over the past couple of years. The new movie gave me renewed hope for the series. Because I walked out of three Star Wars films in my, my life before two months ago. And all three times I was disappointed. Even episode three. A lot of people stand by episode three. I did not like it. Uh, I read the book. Because back in the day the book came out a month before the movie. Um, and the book was so much better. And a lot of that had to do with Hayden Christensen's acting. I don't like him. A lot of people don't like him. Some people do. I just think he did not do the character of Anakin Skywalker justice. I really love the character of Anakin Skywalker. I like watching the Clone Wars series. I have recently got into that. And it's really shown me that he was a deep character. And I loved him. Um, but Hayden Christensen didn't do a really good job portraying that. And I think that's a main reason I didn't like two or three. Main reason I didn't like one. Too much emphasis on the pod racing. I mean, even I was fifth grade at the time. I didn't need that long of a pod race. And 
Two, Jar Jar Binks. Didn't like him. Sorry. Uh, positives, seeing Coruscant for the first time. Uh, Darth Maul. Uh, I'm sure you can see back there. Right up there. I've got Darth Maul Hot Wheel up there. I actually have an episode one Darth Maul uh, from 99 uh, figure in the other room uh, where my game systems are. I, I love the character. I got the pop figure. You know, <laughs> he's probably my favorite villain. I I I'll, I'll admit it. I like him better than I like Darth Vader. And, you know, that's my opinion. And he, he, he was just so mysterious. And there, there's some Legends books, like I, I mentioned, that follow him. But if you actually read the new canon and, and, you know, the comics and all that, he's still around. And it looks like he's going to be in this uh, second half of this season of Rebels, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so I want to go over some of the books I've read uh, just to give people an update on that. And we'll go into a little bit more. Uh, this could be a bit of a long video because I'm going over a lot of things. All right, so first up, the very first adult novel. I've read all the kids' novels too, but they're, they're kids' novels. I'll, I'll do a short thing at the end on those. But uh, the first one that came out, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, A New Dawn. Um, it's a bit expensive in hardcover now because it's not running in hardcover anymore. Um, I went ahead and got the hardcover because I had the digital version, and I really enjoyed this book. Um, so this is set before the Rebels TV series. If you haven't seen Rebels, um, it's basically set before Episode Four. Um, it it follows a group of um, like basically a small Rebel group it, before the Rebel Alliance was anything. And this follows two of the characters, Kanan, which is the main Jedi character, and it gives his backstory of how he, you know, how he became a Jedi and how he became to be on his own, how he survived Order 66. That, he goes over that, which I thought was really cool, because here we have a character who was around for the Jedi Council and the Jedi Temple and stuff that Luke Skywalker didn't see. Um... And it, it, it's the story of how he met up with Hera, which is the Twi'lek uh, character from from Rebels. But the thing about this book, and this is actually my favorite of the new canon, it has a great villain. Um, he's not particularly, you know, um, you know, menacing, if you will, but he's the type of villain that you're like, how are you going to beat this guy? He's basically a an efficiency inspector. He goes to this mining colony um, where Kanan's doing some work because he's going around the universe doing work, trying to keep the fact that he was a Jedi secret because the Empire doesn't like that. Um, and this efficiency inspector, he basically he sleeps like an hour a day. Um, he's half cybernetic. He can record memories, delete memories. He can pull up anything and watch. You know, basically, imagine if you were going about your life and you saw something, it gets recorded, and you can pull up the video and see every little single detail on demand. So it, it was interesting seeing how they went about that. I highly recommend it. I'm not going to go over everything. Um, but I thought it was a good introduction to the TV series, which is a shame because the TV series is really made for kids. Um... In the same sense that the Clone Wars was. Um, so many kids didn't read this one. And I thought it was a good book. Uh, and many adults didn't because they saw, oh, well, it's Rebels. I'm not going to watch that. It's a kid's show. Um, so that's a shame. It's a really good book. I highly recommend it. Um, I think it's about, um, you can get it in the next book I'm going to talk about, Tarkin, for, I think, like 13 bucks on iTunes. You check it out. And, yeah, speaking of Tarkin, let, let me pull that up. That, that's this one. You'll recognize that guy. That's Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, this goes over his life. Uh, this leads up to Episode 4, obviously, because he, you know, kicks the bucket in Episode 4. But it shows how he became who he is. He um, He's really an interesting character. The book was all right. Um, I found, though, with the book, because half of his flashback... Half of it's like present day as far as the book's concerned. I found that the present day stuff I didn't really care about. I didn't care about the little mission and whatnot. I really didn't. 
Um, but all the backstory was really good to flesh out that character that we didn't get to see a lot of, who actually was really cool, according to the canon. So, we're going to move on. Um, Heir to the Jedi was the next one I read. Heir to the Jedi. This one's a little special, because it is only the second Star Wars novel to be told in the first person. The other one's I, Jedi. It came out in the 90s, are Legends. Um, this one is told from Luke Skywalker's perspective. It, you know, I bet you could have guessed that. Um, and it really tells a story. Uh, I never really thought of this, but apparently the author did and got permission to write about it. Between 4 and 5, you know, 4, he's kind of figured out what the Jedi are, you know, knows he wants to be a Jedi. Um, can kind of use the Force, not really... But by 5, and at the beginning of 5, I'm not even talking Dagobah 5, I'm talking Hoth 5, um, he's able to move his lightsaber in the Wampa Cave without any pr prior training. And this explains why. Um, it's a really good book. Uh, probably out of the 5 I've read, I'd say number 3 out of 5. Um, sorry guys. But yeah, um, it, it's it's really good. It, the only thing is, I don't like the first person. Sorry, I'm going to move this. I don't like the first person perspective when it comes to books. I find it harder to read. Um, but other than that, uh, the, the other thing is... Well, I'm not going to give it away. Um, I'll let you read it. Definitely give it a look, though. The new canon's really good. It's no heir to the Empire, but it's really good. Um, next one we got is Words of the Sith. I read this one. Right there. Um, now, this cover is deceptive. Um, so, I went into this, not knowing anything about the book, thinking, cool, this is going to follow Vader and Palpatine. I'll learn more about their relationship. Well, 25% of the book does. The other 75 follows a group of, of um, I'd say a rebel faction, um, Looking to destroy a, a Star Destroyer. Which is really cool, but I wanted to, I wanted more of Vader and Palpatine. So this is probably number four on my list. Um, and then the last one that's probably number, I'd say two out of my favorites. This Dark Disciple. Um, that dude right there. Um, name's Quain, Quainlin Boss. I called him not Anakin the entire book. Because he's really written like Anakin Skywalker. And you'll notice if you watch the uh, Clone Wars series, that's uh, Asajj Ventress. Um, they kind of team up to try to assassinate Dooku. And he, he's a Jedi. You know, he gets sent by the Jedi Council. And I really liked it. I liked the Clone Wars period. Because it was, it was a really interesting period for the, for the canon. And I thought the way they wrote Quainlin Voss was very interesting. I, I really liked it. So I would give all those a read. Um, now, real quick, on the, the more kiddish novels, they do have some that follow the Rebels series. I think there's about four or five that are strictly Rebels books that really tell a story of season one through those books. They'll take you maybe an hour, hour and a half to read each book. Um, they're not that big. Uh, they just kind of give a, you know, you can watch the series and get everything, or you can read the books. Now, the other thing they wrote was the Servants to the Empire. And if you watch Rebels, you remember there was a an episode where um, um, main guy, yeah, little kid, I, I, I'm terrible with names. Um, he's at... Um, the Imperial Academy, and he runs into um, one of the kids, and and they're kind of doing their thing. And then when he gets away, you know, the main dude, uh, kid he meets, kind of says, "Well, I gotta stay here and find my sister," and then makes it look like he's trying to stop him. That guy who's trying to stop them is the main um, character of of the servants to the Empire, and it's all about. How he wanted to be in the you know an imperial officer and he wanted to do this, but his sister gets taken by the empire while she's at the academy, and now he's decided he's going to go to the academy, play a good imperial cadet, 
but still try to find her. And I, I actually think it's a good, good series. It's pretty good. Um, so that's that, that's the main thing I've been doing over the last couple months. Uh, you can blame Star Wars for me not posting anything, because yeah, I, I've been really deep into it. Uh, the other thing you can blame is my schoolwork, uh, but I'm going to do more of these. Yeah, the, the other thing is uh, my daughter was on a uh, school holiday. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's easier with a quiet house to do these. So, uh, I wanted to, wanted to wait. Um, so, we'll get into, uh, more wrestling now, since that's part of this channel. Um, I've been really lapsed when it comes to wrestling. I've been watching the pay-per-views as much as I can, but... I used to watch Raw and SmackDown every week. And the last time I did that was probably the lead up to SummerSlam last year. Yeah, last year. Um, but with Daniel Bryan retiring, very sad by the way, I did tune in this week and, and watch Raw. And i got to say, it, it, it's alright. It's not... It's not what it could be and it's not what it should be but it's better than it was when i stopped watching um uh, i was very sad for daniel bryan's retirement speech i believe my wife had tears in her eyes uh, i was lucky enough my family was lucky enough we got to go to a live event when we were in san diego in 2013 um shortly after SummerSlam 2013 when brian won and then lost the title we got to see him wrestle Orton in the main event at a live event, which was awesome. And I'm just glad I got to see the guy wrestle live before he retired. Um, other than that, um, not much to say on the wrestling front. Um, I'm going to probably start watching weekly again, just to, especially with WrestleMania coming up. Although I'm not very excited for it, i got to say. I don't like who they're pushing. Um, I'm going to try, though. Um on the video game front, um, I got Fallout 4. Um, I don't know. I really see it as Fallout 3.5. Uh, I, I liked it. You know, it's not a bad thing to say Fallout 3.5, but I don't think it's enough of a sequel. And that's sad to say. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and bash it. I, I loved it. Um, I haven't played all the way through. But what I have played, I've really come to enjoy. Um, but it's not it, it, it's not revolutionary for the series. Um, and honestly, I've been playing a lot of NBA 2K lately. So that's been my pitfall. Because I'm like, oh yeah, I'll go play a series game. But oh, that NBA 2K 15, you know, 16, you know, go play that. <laughs> but uh that Madden. Madden. Madden's another downfall of mine. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been up to. A lot of reading. Um, and if you guys like these uh, little, uh, you know, reviews on the Star Wars books, let me know. Um, I can do more in-depth reviews. Um, I could even do spoiler-filled reviews, and we can really start talking about them. Because I, I just brushed over these, you know... Um, but out of the five books, I would say number five, Tarkin. Number four, Lords of the Sith. Three, Heir to the Jedi. Two, Dark Disciple. One, New Dawn. Um, so if you read any of the new canon, read New Dawn. Even if you have no intention of watching the Rebel series, read New Dawn. So we'll probably go ahead and leave it at this. Uh, I'm going to do more videos, I promise. Um probably on a weekly basis I'm looking at doing um, cold cut-ins to some of my steam games I haven't played yet ever thank you humble bundle thank you um, steam sales I've got a bunch of games I've never played so I want to I want to do an entire series where I just record my gameplay footage and my commentary over a game that I have zero minutes playing uh, I'll just go through Find one with zero minutes, and we'll load it up and see what it's like. All right, and I'm not talking like I played Doom. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to load up Doom Two. No, that's that didn't count. I want to try series I've never tried before, and I want to talk about them and probably make them a little funny. Um, 
other than that, yep, that, that's it for this week. Um, go ahead and leak, lay, uh, leave a comment down below. Um, I promise I'm getting new recording equipment. Um, my wife made me promise um, I'd be doing that this week. So uh, we should have a little bit better quality coming up. I'm also looking at uh, getting some better video editing software. It'll be a little bit less uh, raw, um, you know, with the video. Try to make it look a little bit better. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Uh, go ahead and follow my channel if you like it. If, even if you don't like it, follow it, please. <laughs> uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, The Will Dogs Games and Wrestling. Uh, same as the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Um, have a good one.